Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matteo Natale, and I'm the technical standards manager for DJI in Europe. So today I want to talk about the social value of agricultural drones, as well as highlight how DJI's technology is playing a key role in global climate action and sustainable development. So please stick around. So very briefly, in case you're unfamiliar with uh, DJI, DJI is the global, is the world's leading developer and manufacturer of civil drones. And since our founding in 2006, we've led the world with civilian drone innovations that have both empowered people to completely transform their imagination into reality and also empowered people to completely reinvent and transform their work. So since our founding in 2006, we have developed an iterative product-focused uh, philosophy that has seen our core technologies evolve into the complex suite of, pro of products that we have today. So we started off with drones in 2006 in Shenzhen, but today we also have handheld gimbal devices, we have action cameras, and we also have professional videographer equipment. But we are well aware that our technology can be a lot more than just gadgets for enthusiasts and gadgets for hobbyists. Our technology can make a tangible impact in today's uh, society. It can make the world a better place, it can make the world a safer place, and especially in this context, a more sustainable place. In fact, our technology can be used in real life scenarios. For example, in firefighting, it can be used in, in a search and rescue, construction site inspection, uh, mining inspection, surveying, mapping, the list clearly goes on. And especially the topic at hand today, which is agriculture. Which brings me to the question, why DJI Agriculture? Why has DJI launched a whole product department and a whole product line just devoted to agricultural solutions? Now the answer to this question is both very simple but also quite multifaceted. And to put it simple, the answer is what industry is more essential to today's and also tomorrow's well-being and lifestyle than agriculture? But I'd like to expand on that answer. I'd like, I try to. It's, it won't let me. There we go. Okay, so the United Nations have predicted that by 2050, there will be 9.7 billion people on Earth. And I'm sure you agree with me when I say that those are, those are a lot of mouths to feed. And this also comes at a time where agricultural practices are more and more um, affected by global, global uh, temperatures rising, extreme weather, uh, unpredictable weather patterns. At the same time, agri modern, traditional agricultural pra practices are a key contributor to green, greenhouse gas emissions, as well as a significant consumer of water resources worldwide. So these issues, give rise to a need for greener and more sustainable agricultural practice. And that's where we jump in. So to conclude my answer, I'd like to use a quote from the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals, which is, end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. But how do we do that? Now, in DJI Agriculture, we believe, um, in fact, we've also demonstrated, and we'll see that with the next few cases, that agricultural drones can play a key role and make a tangible impact to fight the challenges that I've just mentioned. How? First of all, by reducing guesswork, so reducing the uncertainty of the people at work. Reducing the inputs, and this one's really important, because agricultural drones can help reduce the chemical waste which is not only beneficial for the environment, it also makes it a lot safer for the people at work, so for the farmers on the field. It increases the flexibility, it increases the outputs, and ultimately, because we want higher yields with lower inputs, it really does improve the efficiency. Hence our slogan, better growth, better life, which we can proudly say we're taking leap towards within the last few years. Now, in DJI agriculture, we believe drones can make a difference to fight these challenges. 
I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail as to how our products work. We have our experts here. They'll gladly show you around our booth and talk about our products. But I do want to give a broad explanation as to how our products work. So we make drones, as you can see, that are capable of lifting heavy payloads, carrying that payload, and then delivering it by spraying it either in the form of a liquid or granular solids. This has incredible uh, environmental benefits. For example, firstly, our drones are all battery powered. So we use lithium ion batteries for all of our products, which means you don't have to use fossil fuels. Specific spraying and spreading. Now, our technology is extremely precise. We only spray the crops that actually need chemical use, not the ones that don't. I'll give you an example. We use the Mavic 3M which is a multispectral drone from which you can gain multispectral data. Once the multispectral data will then tell you exactly which crops need spraying and which won't. Only then comes out the heavy cavalry and the DJI Agras can then spray the crops which need attention. You will only be dosing the crops that need chemical dosage and, and, and not the ones that don't. Propeller downwash. Now, traditional agricultural practices use water as a medium for chemical spraying. Our products use the same propellers that they use to generate lift. We use those to generate a downwash. That accounts for a massive water reduction when, chemi when spraying chemicals. Ultimately, propeller downwash coupled with an adjustable droplet size really do account for a minimal chemical drift. As I said, our drones are extremely precise. And on an optimal day with low winds, propeller downwash and an adjustable droplet size account for an, uh, a minimal chemical drift, meaning that the adjacent fields and the adjacent crops, those that you don't want to dose, will, do, will not be receiving any chemicals. Quick video to show how our products work. <clears throat> Great, so I've talked about our products. I've talked about where we stand. I'd now like to talk about some of the cases that we are proud to have taken part in alongside our partners, alongside our dealers, and our, alongside our clients. And first we have the reduction in water consumption in Turkey. So meet Emra Shen, a farmer from Turkey, owner of a 200 hectare farm. He was able to significantly reduce the economic losses by using the DJI Agress T30. Now, traditional sprayers use between 225 to 450 liters of water per hectare. Now, in this specific case, Emra was able to use between 15 and 30 liters of water per hectare, accounting for a massive 95% uh, reduction in water consumption. And this is an exceptional result especially in a country like Turkey, which has seen multiple droughts throughout the last few years. Next, we have the reduction in chemical use in Hungary by spot spraying with our partner, Plantadrone. Um, so this case is about the challenge of managing an a weed called Circium arvense, which can spread very rapidly across fields and greatly reduce the yield. This is usually dealt by uh, with traditional, traditionally with, with tilling and also a widespread herbicide application. We've teamed up with Plantadrone in Hungary and we pulled out the Phantom 4 multispectral drone to gain multispectral data of the field. This has given us a prescription map which essentially is a blueprint which tells us exactly which parts of the crop field require spraying and which don't. Only then comes out the DJI Agris and with three different dosages of glyphosate solution, we completely eradicated the weed. Accounting for a 67% reduction in chemical use, which also means 15 euro uh, savings per acre. This is also in line with one of the objectives of the EU Green Deal, which requires a 50% reduction of chemical usage in agriculture by 2030. So according to this case, we're already on track with this objective. We have another case from Japan, which is the reduction of, of carbon emissions with variable rate fertilizer spreading. 
Now rice is one of the main contributors to the income, the agricultural income of Japan. However, they do face challenges with normal spraying of fertilizers due to the cost and also to the damage to the ecosystem. Synthetic fertilizers, in fact, have also seen their increase in their usage between 2000 and 2018 of 35%, and they are great contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. What we did is we partnered with a local, local rice producer in Japan. We pulled out the Phantom 4 multispectral drone, as I, get, as I said before, uh, gained a prescription map of the field, and then the DJI Agris was, uh, was able to reduce carbon emissions by 409 kilograms, reduce the fertilizer usage by 20% with a variable rate fertilizer, and ultimately increase the yield by 8%. Finally, we have a last use case for the combating of invasive species. Now, these invasive species can outcompete many plants, both on marshes, both on wetlands, on, and, and also on pastures, and they can very, and it's very difficult to deal with them. Uh, drones are very unique in the sense that they can um, fight this challenge. Usually, uh, invasive species are. Um, are combated either on the ground by ground spraying, however this can be very dangerous as is the case with the Sotunovsky hogweed which can cause com uh, rashes on skin and also can be, um, we can also use air spraying but this uses a blanket approach which is very damaging for the ecosystem. We teamed up with one of our partners in Lithuania we, we, and within two months remotely piloting uh, the drone, so at a safe distance from a dangerous uh, invasive species which we, were, we managed to completely eradicate the weed in Lithuania. And most importantly, the adjacent fields were completely untouched by the chemical drift, which is a testament to how precise our technology can be. So I've talked about uh, how our technology can greatly reduce the carbon emissions, can greatly reduce the chemical consumption and the water consumption. I'd now like, like to talk about some specific cases of people who have employed our products in ultimately for a better lifestyle. And first of all, we have Dr. Maria Maestro, who is the head of the drone division at Acre Surveying Solutions. She discovered multispectral images and how rich these can be and was drawn to the drone industry in 2016. She obtained her remote pilot license in only six months and now uh, is, is leading the drone division at Acre Surveying Solutions. She also balances her role in her career as the role, with the role as a mother and predicts that her daughter will obtain an agricultural drone license by the age of 18. She will be here tomorrow and the day after, so stop by and she will tell, her, tell you all about her life story. We also have Thais Ribeiro from Brazil, who was a former nurse who trans transitioned to be an agricultural drone pilot in Brazil. Between only November 2022 and February 2023, she has flown 1,115 successful missions totaling 133 hours of flight time and treating 2,242 hectares of land by herself. All of this between November 2022 and February 2023. So agricultural drones have revolutionized farming in Brazil and this is a great testament uh, to this. She does encourage other women to pursue this career and her story also highlights the endless possibilities of the agricultural industry and the growing demand for skilled professionals within this industry. I'd like to close on a couple of remarks. Um, first of all, DJI has great plans for the future, for 2024 and beyond. We have the DJI Agris T50 and T25 that are already out in China and they will be out uh, the next year in the rest of the world. They account for an improved capacity, improved safety features, improved ease of use, and ultimately, an improved quality of life, which, after all, is exactly what we're aiming at. We've demonstrated that our products can reduce carbon emissions, they can reduce water consumptions, reduce chemical waste, and ultimately, improve the safety of the people at work. And especially, in conclusion, they can improve the costs. Thank you very much for listening. I have one last video to show you that we had in a project in conjunction with the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations in honor of food, World Food Day.
Thank you. Boom.